In this one, we're going to be taking a look at how we can protect specific endpoints to limit them to only people who have tokens. For example, you see we have this slash me endpoint, and in this slash me endpoint, we should be able to send back the current logged in user's information depending on the token that they use. By the way, one thing I notice up front is create access token might not be something we use down here. So yeah, this should have been create access token. So just a mistake I just saw. So let's continue. So from first JWT extended, we also have a decorator called JWT required. So we're going to import JWT required and whenever you want an endpoint to require a user to first authenticate. So we're going to do a JWT required and then that's going to make sure that and then that's going to make sure that if a user tries to, to come here, we are going to tell them, hey, you're not you're not using a token, so please first get a token. For example, now if I went to the browser and went ahead to slash to slash API v1 me, notice how we get missing authorization header. So without this, a user would still be able to access the route. So if I come back, you can see that it works. But with this, a user will have to first authenticate. So let me bring up my postman again. And for us to authenticate, I'm going to create another request. Let's say like here. And this one, of course, is going to be to get, get going to me. So to add a header, if we go to our login, so here in our login, if we try to make the same request, we get the access token. This is what we want to send on all the requests that need authentication. So here I can come to auth and go to bear a token. So this, the type we use here is bear a token and I'll show you more in the documentation. And now if we make this request, notice that now we are able to access the, notice that now we are able to access the route. So if this token is malformed or it has been tampered with, you should be able to see that the token was not correct. So yeah, so for us to be able to, to get the real user, so inside here, we can use something called get JWT identity. We are going to import something called get JWT identity. So down here, I'm going to import PDB here. So PDB is the Python debugger. It enables us to pause a program and then we can inspect some variables and functions. So I'm gonna pause that. And then when I come here and try to make the same request, you see that it gets paused here. But when we do get JWT identity and call it, you see that it gives us the user ID that was encoded using that token. So we could go over here and do, let's say, user equals get JWT identity. So that's gonna give us the that's gonna give us the user ID. So in fact, I'm just gonna call it user ID. Then we can go ahead and now query our DB to get which user this one is. So we can do user user dot query. We want to say filter by want to filter by ID and when we're gonna filter where the ID is the user ID and then let's call first because that should give us only one so we can set this one to the user now we can just return now we can just return the 25 you can just have like the username which should be user dot username and also the email which should be user dot email uh yeah that's it if we go back to postman and make the same get request notice that we get the user sent back to us so let's make sure we are sending the status code and things should be good so that's how you get the current login user if you had like a profile model that had like more information you would get them here and also something i should mention probably is uh, the application we working with here is pretty simple but if you had like large amounts of data you literally might not want to be doing like user.name, you might just want to serialize user at glance without having to get the attributes. So you would be doing that by looking at something like Marshmallow or other ways or creating specific serialization classes that can do that work for you. But for now, this should be okay. We should be able to still do fine. So thanks guys for watching. Next, in the next one, we are going to be looking at how to create refresh tokens. If, the, if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next one.